If you clicked on this video, you've probably watched a ton of productivity YouTube videos over the past few months, and that's probably gotten you A, either really confused, or B, really overwhelmed and thinking about how to create your own really complex productivity system. And that's what this video is about. Trying to tell the 99% of you that are watching this video that you really don't need to have a really complex productivity system to get work done. You'd be fine with probably just one app and using it every day, because at the end of the day, what matters is really just doing the work and not exactly the tool you're using to do it. You may have seen this thumbnail by Ali Abdal that kind of shows that there's a lot of different things you could do to make a really complex and really cool looking productivity system. But at the end of the day, that's not really necessary, is it? This meme, on the screen right now is kind of an oversimplification of the idea, but in reality, you really could do everything you needed to probably with just a text editor. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through a bunch of the different options you have for starting your own productivity system and how you can scale it back down so that it's pretty simple, easy to use, and so that you spend more time getting your work done and less time customizing your workspace. A quick thank you to Xtiles for sponsoring this video, but more on them later. With all the different productivity apps out there, it's no wonder you've gotten confused and overwhelmed about which one to choose. You've probably hopped from app to app to app without getting any actual work done in the meantime. And the simplified version of this video is just pick one app, whether it be Xtiles, Evernote, Notion, Obsidian, whatever, it doesn't really matter, even if it's just a plain text editor, and use it every single day so you can build good, consistent habits. And once you've got that down, you should be able to be free to do whatever you want with your system. You know, if you started off, simple with just like obsidian and you find yourself oh i wish i had some blocks that could let me do other things or maybe i wish i had like a project managing type of tool then you could add on notion to your system after you felt you know after you've hit that limitation but until then don't do anything to your system keep it simple because for the most part all you're really going to use it for is note taking and again i guess i'm assuming what you're using it for but for most people that watch this youtube channel they're students and you're really going to be using it for note taking and just one app is good enough for that. You don't need to have a really complex system. So now let's go and walk through each of these options and see how you can use them to build your own system or start it off at least. If you're looking for a productivity tool to make the center of your workflow, then check out Xtiles. Xtiles is a visual tool that lets you organize all the ideas and information you come across while you're browsing the internet, for example. If you're in school, which you probably are if you're watching this video, it's great for that purpose. I've been using it to organize my schoolwork for the past few weeks and it's been going great. I love the visual aspect of it and how it lets me get all the jumbled messes of ideas I have in my brain down onto paper or well, I guess X tiles. And it's been really helping me get all my tasks done really quickly and absorb the information that I've been learning in my classes. Of course, you could use it for a bunch of different things as well. You can use it for YouTube video planning, like this one. You can use it for articles. You can use it for gym to-do lists. You can use it for just shopping lists. You can use it for anything you really want to. Now, if you want to share things with your friends and collaborate with other people, all you have to do is press the share button and then boom, now you're working on an awesome project with a bunch of cool people. I'll leave a link to it in the description because I really encourage you guys to check it out and it would help me and the channel out if you did. So go check out the link in the description and let me know what you think. Anyways, let's get back to the video. I also forgot to mention that they're launching a product hunt today. So once you use the product, go ahead to the product hunt link. I'll leave a link in the description and let them know what you think. Leave your honest review. Let's talk about Obsidian. Now Obsidian, I made a lot of videos about. I'll leave links to them in the description. Those are more tutorial based. But right now I'm just gonna go through some of the advantages and disadvantages you might wanna consider when you're talking about picking a note-taking app. Now Obsidian is great because all of its files are local, just plain text, markdown, which makes it really quick to search through, really quick to use, really quick to write. It's very fast and responsive. You own all your data because it's all local, which again is great because you know, you get to keep all of it. You get to back it up however you want, whether it be through Git, Google Drive, whatever, really awesome. And it does come with a mobile app if you want. You just have to pay a little bit extra. So you get all like the good functionality that you want or could make from it. Now, one of the bad things about it is that because it is just plain text and markdown, Using some advanced features from plugins can be a little bit weird. If you want like a Kanban board to track your projects or to-dos like YouTube videos or something, then that gets a little weird because the plugin is cool, but it doesn't work as good as something like Trello or Notion would. If you want to use like a calendar in it, then the same problem occurs. But at the end of the day, that's like trying to make Obsidian something it's not. Obsidian is 
in my opinion, is meant to be something that's a simple, lightweight text editor that you can use to take good notes. And that's what's great. And how can I talk about Obsidian without even mentioning the fact that it has a really cool graph view and backlinks that make it really nice and easy to see how your notes interconnect. But at the end of the day, this is really a plus. And personally, I don't use it all that much, but it does make it easier when I'm reviewing for like some sort of class to see how all my different notes connect and how I might use that in like an essay answer, for example. But yeah, Obsidian is great and it is a great option if you're thinking about starting out your simple productivity system. Notion is probably one of the tools you've heard the most about and that's for good reason because Notion really is a great piece of software. It gives you a nice, great visual way of building out your knowledge base or homepage or dashboard or whatever you wanna call it. You know, you've seen people make those aesthetic dashboards for school and home and the gym and whatever. And I have a pretty nice home dashboard too that I like to use to get to my YouTube projects planning page and my school dashboard, which is where I kind of like track all my assignments and stuff. All the other pages you see on my dashboard though aren't really used. And I'll talk about that in just a minute as a drawback of Notion. Something I really like about Notion is all the cool widgets you get to use. You get to use like calendar widgets, to-dos, whatever. And it just makes it look really nice. You have a lot of cool functionality that you can use but this also ends up being one of its drawbacks, right? I love the table widgets. I love the dashboards. I love the databases, I think they call it. And you can use that, you know, to track your to-dos in just a normal table format, as well as visualize them on a calendar so you can see when your assignments are coming up in the next few weeks. That's really cool. But there's also a lot of other things that you don't need. And me personally, I'm somebody that like gets distracted by bells and whistles a lot. And Notion has a lot of those. There's a lot of cool, shiny things that you can use. And then I get distracted by them, which is why my dashboard looks like it does. There's a lot of pages that I don't use. There's a lot of pages that are useless. And I end up suffering from that by like, you know, wasting a lot of time. And now those pages I never use. And I literally only use my school page, my YouTube page, and just my home dashboard. So if you're thinking about Notion, make sure you don't get sucked into the bells and whistles because it really is a great piece of software. But one of the other things that sucks about it is that it's oftentimes a little bit slow. It gets a little laggy, even if you have really good internet connection. And if you're trying to use it offline, well, that experience isn't the best or it wasn't good the last time I tried using Notion on offline. So if you're trying to do some like offline editing on the bus or train or plane or whatever, it's not gonna be too hot. Next, let's talk about just plain text editors. And you might think I'm trolling, but I'm really not. There's nothing simpler than just plain text. You make a new file for every topic you want. You make a new file every day so you can have your daily to-do list and boom, you're done. You're zooming through your notes, whether you're using Vim, Emacs, just Apple Notes and Notepad or VS Code or whatever to edit those text files, you're gonna be zooming through taking notes and that's the only thing you'll be focusing on. Of course, you'll be missing some features that might be helpful that you might be getting from like Notion, Xtiles, Obsidian, Evernote or whatever. But at the end of the day, you're gonna be using a very, very simple system. And for some people, that's what works best. And I can't think of anything simpler than just a plain text system. That's all I really have to say for this video. Thank you so much for watching all the way through. And if you did, then I know you know that you need to simplify your system as soon as possible. So go ahead and do that. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, leave a cool comment, subscribe and share this with somebody else who needs to simplify their system. Once again, thank you so much for watching through the video. I'll see you in the next one. I hope you have a great day. Peace out.